Good evening all, I'm Susanna Glidden, and on behalf of Stop the Algonquin Pipeline Expansion, we welcome and thank you for attending this very important forum. Our experts tonight will address the health, safety, and environmental impacts from natural gas infrastructure. Public awareness of serious health and environmental impacts of hydrofracking is growing across the country, yet many still think those negative impacts are confined solely to where the drilling takes place. As the expansion of gas infrastructure sweeps across our area, we're quickly realizing that the build-out, new gas supply, and other components of shale gas production bring health, safety, and environmental threats very close to home and, for some of us, to our own door. For those unfamiliar with this form of extreme energy extraction, high volume horizontal hydraulic fracturing or fracking for natural gas involves using millions of gallons of our limited supply of fresh water mixed with hundreds of toxic chemicals and sand per well and injected under very high pressure into well bores that then cracks open the shale to deliver the tiny bubbles of trapped natural gas. 10 to 40 percent of this toxic brew returns back to the surface with the gas, along with additional contaminants loosened by the drilling, including volatile organic compounds, heavy metals, high levels of chlorides and bromides, and radioactive elements radon and, re and radium. There is no safe disposal plan for the billions of gallons of toxic radioactive gas drilling waste produced each year. Large swaths of land are cleared and a huge infrastructure of pipelines and giant compressor stations are created to carry the shale gas primarily composed of methane which is a far more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Pipelines leak. Pipelines and compressors can explode, causing major damage. Compressors are loud and emit high levels of extremely toxic pollutants continuously 24 hours a day. The proposed Spectra Algonquin Incremental Market, or AIM, pipeline expansion project would construct five new compressor stations, each emitting tons of toxic pollutants per year, impacting public health and the environment. The impact could be critical for citizens of our tri-state area, where air quality is already unacceptable according to US EPA standards. Potentially high levels of radon, the leading cause of lung cancer in non-smokers nationwide, will be carried in the gas supply from the Marcellus Shale, known for its high radon content, that underlies West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New York. AIM is slated for Westchester, excuse me, Rockland, Westchester, and Putnam counties, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, reviewing the project, held two scoping meetings on the AIM project, but with negligible communication beforehand to either elected officials or the general public. One of our many concerns about the proposed pipeline is that it would intersect underground in Verplank with a proposed high voltage transmission line just a few hundred feet from the Indian Point nuclear facility and its 40 years of spent fuel rods and situated very near the Ramapo and Stamford fault lines. The project involves replacing its existing 26-inch diameter pipe with a 42-inch big high-pressure pipeline between Ramapo and Fairfield County, Connecticut. With inadequate pipeline regulation and oversight and Spectra's history of safety issues, this pipeline project poses a serious threat to public health, safety, property values, and the economy. 
Although the U.S. Information Administration, sorry, uh, uh, the U.S. Energy Information Administration projects a steady decline in demand for natural gas through 2040, gas infrastructure projects proliferate. Given the glut of natural gas and cheap energy prices domestically, one could surmise that the export of natural gas is the ultimate goal, commanding a much higher global price. Expanding and building new gas infrastructure unwisely invests in dirty fossil fuels exacerbating global warming at a time when instead we should be fast-tracking our investment in and expansion of clean, renewable energy infrastructure. Susan, to introduce our speakers. Excuse me. Hi, thank you all for coming. And we want to thank all of our, I want to thank all the SAFE founders who are, have worked so hard to put this together. We've got Jerry Revnitsky, who helped us get this library, Susanna Glidden. At the table in the back, Susan McDonnell, Paula Clare, Ellen Weiniger, and Marion Rose, who unfortunately could not be with us this evening. She's at home resting. 